On March 1, 1932, Charles and Anne Lindbergh's 22-month-year-old son, Charles Jr., was kidnapped from the Lindbergh home near Hopewell, New Jersey. Because Charles Lindbergh was a national hero, the kidnapping of his son quickly created a crisis labeled as the crime of the century. Over the span of three years, this case was investigated, and eventually in 1935, Richard Houtman was convicted for the kidnapping and murder of Charles Jr. and was sentenced to death. Yet many questions still surround this case. Was Houtman really guilty? Did he have any accomplices? And if so, who? Was the death of Charles Lindbergh Jr. an accident or murder? In this video, we will expose you to some possible answers to these questions. But at the end of the day, the truth may never be known. It was around 10 p.m. when Charlie's nurse, Betty Gow, had come to check on him in his nursery located on the second floor of the Lindbergh home. She noticed a window was left open and went to close it. This is when she noticed Charlie was missing from his crib. What remained was a ransom note asking for $50,000. In the investigation that ensued, a ladder was discovered on this date. Part of the ladder was split into two parts, suggesting it broke during the kidnapper's ascent to the nursery, yet no traces of blood were ever found. Over the course of the next month, the Lindberghs received multiple notes from the kidnapper, and eventually on April 1st, the Lindberghs paid $50,000 to the kidnapper and received a note that said the baby could be found on a boat named Nellie near Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Yet after a search of Martha's Vineyard, the baby was yet to be found. On May 12, 1932, the body of the kidnapped baby was accidentally found, partly buried and badly decomposed, about four and a half miles southeast of the Lindbergh home. The baby's skull was crushed, and the coroner determined that the baby had died two months prior. Yet even to this day, People still don't know whether Charlie's death was accidental or purposeful. When examining Charlie's remains, experts found that both sides of his skull were cracked. Some believed that this was caused by a fall from the ladder during the kidnapper's descent from the nursery. Because of the specific fracturing, however, others believe only a severe blow by a heavy object to the side of the skull could explain the cracks on both sides of Charlie's head. 25 years ago, the last chapter began in the tragic Lindbergh kidnapping. A police net closed in on Bruno Richard Hauptmann. Hauptmann was first identified as a suspect when a filling station attendant was suspicious of the cash given as payment and wrote down the license number of the automobile driven by the purchaser. After further examination by the police, it was discovered to be one of the marked bills and the license number to belong to a Richard Hauptman from the Bronx. In Hauptman's New York garage was found $14,000 in marked bills. Other damning evidence, an artist's sketch from a description by the ransom go-between. Handwriting specimens that definitely link the Bronx carpenter with the crime. And written on a door, the phone number of Dr. Condon, the innocent agent who paid the ransom. Circumstantial evidence overwhelming in its impact. Uh, how did Hoffman spend his last few minutes? Hoffman spent his last few minutes of life with his spiritual advisor to accompany him to the chair. Uh, what was the reaction of the spectators during the execution? Significantly enough, there was no reaction among the spectators whatever, because the whole thing went off so smoothly. It uh, seemed unreal, and uh, none of them showed any surprise, none of them moved, none of them stared, 
and all remain in their seats very, very quiet. The big moment tonight, of course, was when Hoffman walked into the electrocution chamber. The question was whether or not he was going to confess. He didn't say a word. Hoffman never confessed, despite being offered pardoning from the death sentence. The media was heavily influential in Hoffman's conviction, branding him the most hated man in America and a cold-hearted killer. The prosecution's case was largely circumstantial, and the evidence expected of a criminal trial, such as crime scene fingerprints and concrete motive, were never produced. The ladder found under the nursery window was used as evidence of Hauptmann's guilt. However, it was taken apart and then incorrectly reassembled during the investigation process. A footprint was also found at the base of the ladder during the preliminary investigation, but was disregarded as irrelevant. Because the police investigation was so questionable, the identities of accomplices will forever be a mystery. There are, however, several strong suspects. The night the ransom money was exchanged, the family's mediator, Dr. Condon, met with a man that went by the name John, later known as Cemetery John. He was described as having abnormal thumbs and his description was made into a police sketch. These descriptions of Cemetery John seem to match closely to a man named John Knoll. John Knoll has thumbs with abnormal growths and his face appears very similar to that of the police sketch, leading some to believe he was an accomplice in the kidnapping. Charles Lindbergh Sr., the victim's father, was widely known for his career as an American aviator. He came to instantaneous world fame by flying the first solo, transatlantic, non-stop flight. Lindbergh was also publicly recognized as a prominent member of the eugenics movement, a movement that focused on applying principles of genetics, heredity, and selective breeding for the purpose of improving the human race. Lindbergh's son, Charles Lindbergh Jr., was born with several birth defects, such as an abnormally large cranium, unfused skull bones, and overlapping toes, which affected his ability to stand upright. Lindbergh worried these abnormalities would affect his son's ability to walk and run normally in the future. Because of these ideologies, some believe that Charles Lindbergh Sr. may have been an accomplice in his own son's kidnapping. Following this historic kidnapping, Congress adopted a federal kidnapping statute in 1932 called the Federal Kidnapping Act, commonly known as the Little Lindbergh Law. It was intended to allow federal authorities to step in and pursue kidnappers once they had crossed state lines with their victims. 